This is going to change everybody's viewpoint on this. So the big question is what are top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate, grow their teams and add more transactions year over year while so many struggle? To get the answers, we interview the top real estate agents to learn their secrets to success. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Lead Agent Secrets. Second secret to success is ways to generate leads. I know we touched on this. Jennifer, you are a cold calling, door knocking fiend. Monica, you are more of my and Peter's cup of tea. You are a social media generator. Jennifer, we're going to swing by you first. Ways to generate leads, secrets to success, unpack what you've got going on, how you can help people with generating leads. And also why you chose your method. I think that's important. Why you chose Well, your I method. chose it because Monica told me to. She was my first coach. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tried it and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> she even made me a little bored in everything where it's like, okay, every contact, she had like 20 magnets. So I had to get 20 contacts a day. And she's like, every time you make a contact, move the magnet. So I would like move the magnet. And at first it took me all freaking day. <laughs> and then eventually and she would check up on me and yell at me. And she made me give her money if I didn't make it. <laughs> Remember, Monica? <laughs> this is the truth. I said, how much money would is painful? And back then you were like, I wouldn't want to lose $50 to you. I'm like, give me a check <laughs> for $50 then. Make it payable to me. And if you don't do your calls, I'm cashing it. I'm going to dinner. I, and I always did my calls. I, I never cashed the check. You still I got it though. <laughs> That's in, right. Should be in, in a case. frame. Should be in a frame now. <laughs> yeah, it should. But I think like I think there's a misconception and that people think that you need all these ways working for you. And and there's I, I would say that most people need really only like kind of two ways. One is how do you communicate with the people that you know? And then the second is how do you communicate with the people that you don't know? And if you can focus on just and it has to be authentic to you. And this is where Monica and I agree, and she'll talk more about the authenticity, but however you do the generation to the only reason you're talking to people that you don't know for most real estate agents is to get to know them. So you have a bigger circle of people that you do know. And once that circle is big enough, if that's your jam and you are more team Monica, then you just have to get to that point and then you're good to go. Right, Monica? <laughs> that's right. Just that easy. Just that easy. <laughs> I think the thing about real estate is it's, time and consume it's easy but it takes time i think it's like people think right. it's easy and it's fast i think and it's mm -hmm. like or it's really hard and it's like no the process is simple and it is easy to execute it's just monotonous like there's just That's right. yeah you have to be comfortable with the monotony for sure and it is it, it is easy it's time on task most agents have adhd so like take your ritalin do whatever you need to do to focus every day and get it done my uh my coach the great hank avink said what will you hey hank. What will, hey hank what will you get bored as fuck doing yeah. that was his question like and that's what people don't want to do they don't want to do it but see the problem is it's like it's it there is a pocket of time when it's boring yeah. and then, and then it's like a light bulb. Once you can relate that activity to making money, money yeah. then it becomes it's fun. Totally and you're like, oh man, I can't. Yeah. Like now I can't wait to get on the phone. I want to hear what people say. Cause they're crazy. <laughs> I mean, but really they only say a few things. Yeah. Right. And it's fun. And I know, I know my numbers. I'm on the phone for a certain amount of time. I hit a certain number of contacts. We're making money. Yeah. Like, great. How many times do I want to do that? Okay, so I, I got a question here for you because like any listener, any of our audience knows because I said this a few times now, I had two fears in my life. One of them was having kids. I got over that. I got two now. Nice. But this, I'm glad um, you got over that. That'd be super awkward. This phone like, still eh. weighs about 35 pounds every time I look at it and I have to do a cold call. So how <laughs> did you actually switch? How, how like, What did you do to get that light bulb to click? And to Monica's point, maybe it will never click for me and I'll just be in, you know, building my business the way very similar to hers. But I'm all about Which getting out of my great. comfort zone, right? It's uh, it's I, all about getting and doing the things that you know you require to do to get better. Because if I can associate it with money, game over. Mm -hmm. I would be on the right, spot all, 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 all day long. How many can you do? All, right. all day long. And, and Andrew knows I'm on the phone all the time. Like I don't shut up so when, I, when I call. Are, are these inbound leads that we get from Facebook? I will hound them until they tell me to 
fuck off or we're ready to go, right? <laughs> so what's the problem? I don't, I don't know. It's just I have this. I think you could be focusing on a lot of people have this call reluctance because they're so focused on like, I have to call 20 people. I have to call for two hours. I have to do this. But if you just focus on, let's say you want to start at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. So if you're all or whatever, 839, whatever it is, right? If you just focus on the phone has to be ringing by that time, and then I'll be successful. And that's it. As long as it's ringing by that start time, I'm successful, I win for the day, then you're good. So when you focus on that, and you do it enough times, do it for like a few months, it'll it'll click, you'll be fine. Get Here's something I also know about Jen that she's not mentioning here. And it's a mindset shift on the calls because Jen doesn't go into the calls with, I'm going to get something from this guy. Jen goes into the calls with, I'm going to see if I can actually help this guy. Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to work with them if it's... The reason people have call reluctancy is because they're worried about how am I going to get what I want out of this call? And am I going to bother them for what I want? Yeah. Am I going to try to trick mm -hmm. them for what I want? But if you no. go into it like, I actually have a real estate license. I'm certified by the state to help this person. This person has a problem clearly because it hasn't sold or da, 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 da. Um, I'm going to find the problem. And if I can help them, then this is going to be a great call. Yeah. And that's how Jen... Well, yeah, do you truly believe that you're the best person or that your team are the best people that I know, that I know the best people in the industry in where I live? So when I generate a lead and I give it to somebody else, I know that's the best person and that person's going to help them. And if I would challenge, like, if you're not talking to people, do you really think that you're the best person to help them? Mm. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> She does it. She does it. With um, with cold calling, one of the things I've, I've known have some, a big ego. I've, I've no. known some savage. I, I don't. I hate it as well. I, I'm good at cold outbound, but I don't do cold calling. Like cold email, cold LinkedIn, whatever, all that stuff. I'm fine with. I don't particularly like cold Facebook outreach. Actually, I find that a bit awkward because I feel like it's a bit personal still. But like LinkedIn and email, I'm more than happy with. I do tons. But with the cold calling specifically, one of the things that I mean, I'm no Wall Street stockbrokers, right? Now, you talk about cold callers, like they're serious fucking cold callers. Like they're three, mm -hmm. 500 calls a day. Like, and everyone I've met, it's like they've kind of got two mentalities. One is they go for the no, and two, they just know their numbers. So they're like, well, statistically, right. I need 10 no's to get one yes. So every right. time I get a no, I just know I'm one step closer to the yes. Mm -hmm. And they're exactly. like, the numbers always, always come out. Always. Right. So it's like you might get 30 no's. And then back to back, you get three yeses. Oh, and then your numbers mm -hmm. back, right? Right. And it's um, it's just a mentality thing. And like you said, they just got into the habit. It's like shit. I can make a statistically, let's say, I make 150 phone calls. I'll get a deal. So now they're like, I'll do 300 phone calls a day. I'll get two deals a day. Each deal's worth 30 grand to me. You know, why do you think so right. many brokers are multi, multi millionaires? Because they just went, shit, I pick up this phone, do 300 calls a day. I'm going to make a couple of million dollars this year. It's pretty mm -hmm. motivating. That's <laughs> like, easy. Yeah. It comes real easy. Yeah. One of the things that we used to do on our team. So on our team, we when we were doing about 120 deals a year, me and a partner, I was making a thousand contacts a month. So that's, I can't even, I don't even know the number of dials because I always do contacts. So a thousand contacts a month yielded a, about 120 deals a year. But also what we found is a lot of people have more than one house. So you're getting like multiple deals off of the same yeah. like contact too, which is really fun. And you also then become a networker, right? You're like, oh, I know this guy who does this or this gal who does yeah. this. And like you really do, you become a real estate agent yeah. because you are the connector. You're the person that's responsible you know what I mean? It's like what you want to be. But if you don't get out there and talk to people, nobody's going to know that you can do 100%. that. 100%. I mean, what's usual rates? 33 contacts a day, what, 20% pick up maybe? Maybe for 15%. So you're talking 150, 200 calls a day you're potentially doing? Yeah. You know, maybe upwards of that. And then it's like 1,000 contacts. Fuck, it's 33 contacts a day. And that's if you're working every day of the month, not if you're just working weekdays. But you're an agent, you probably work yeah. every day. Now, Monica... We talked about cold calling. I want to just unpack a little bit more about what you do instead. So you're more social, you're more our side. So unpack your ways of uh, generating leads. Yeah, I'm full referral. So I operate, um, well, first of all, 
everyone that's listening that doesn't want a cold call like Jen, they're like, finally, okay, tell me the secret, Monica. Like, okay, this is going to be my jam. Because most agents want to do business by referral and relationship. That's just the nature of who we are. Yeah. Most mm-hmm. agents would prefer to do that. But the problem is they think that they're not in control of that outcome. If they want to do business by referral re- referral and relationship, they feel like I just have to hope my database pulls up, you know, pulls up for me. And it's just not true. We can create a system and a predictable flow of income through referrals. But it is just like Jen's business in that you have to do the program every day. And the program can be a little different for everybody. I've got what I've done every day. If I'm being totally honest, I don't have to do that program anymore because I've done it for so long that my my status within my 100 to 150 VIPs yeah. is so solid. But here's the thing. This is going to change everybody's viewpoint on this. You have to know what your number one job is if you want to be a referral relationship-based business, realtor. So most people think that job is opening doors, showing houses, negotiating deals, writing contracts. That is not our job. That is a result of you doing your job. So when you wake up and you look at your calendar and you don't have a showing or you don't have an offer, you don't have anything to do today, that's not the case. You actually do because your number one job, if you want to do business by referral, is to make sure that you hold position A in the category of realtor in all 100 to 150 of your favorite people. That is your job. And here's the problem with that job. When those 100 to 150 people go to bed, they forget about you. They forget about what you do. They they have other things going on. Believe it or not, you're not the person that they think about 24-7. We're like, how could that, how could Jen have not told her neighbor about me selling real estate? I've been selling real estate for five years. Well, Jen does, Jen has a lot going on. And if I'm not like, top of mind awareness, truly like completely engaged with their life in a way outside of real estate, I'm not going to get them to stop what they're doing, get my phone number, connect me with their phone number, connect them with my phone number, edify me. It's hard for people to give referrals. So we have to create an environment where they care so deeply about our success, not just, oh yeah, Monica, she's cool, but no, like, Oh my God, we love Monica. She's like Aunt Monica to us. She's great. She's always there when we're celebrating. She's always there when times are tough. She's way more than our realtor. She's a part of our family. She's Aunt Monica. I always say that's my goal. I want to be Aunt Monica in 100 to 150 families or even maybe a lot of presents to give these kids. That's right. No, but (laughs) if you, if I call your top 100 to 150 people and I say, quick survey, name a real estate agent, and they don't name you in the first two seconds, you are not doing your job. That's why this referral and relationship business is tough because that takes daily work. And that's why you should cold call. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yours does too. The thing is, Jen, when you stop cold calling, your business is over. My business will trail out for another year and a year and a half. I will continue. If I never mentioned real estate on Facebook again and never made a call and never made a comment, I would still get business for another year and a half. Yours is done. In theory. I I know you have past clients and they would call you because you do an amazing job, blah, blah, blah. In theory, that's why I like my business. And I actually tested that one year and I ended up doing, I can't remember how many deals it was, but I made a hundred. I was full in coaching. I wasn't talking about real estate. I wasn't doing my daily routine to uh, strengthen and deepen these relationships. And I made $120,000 in like five hours a week in real estate. And because I had shut it down, I've since obviously built it back up. But um, so there's that. I can go on, but let me just stop. So when it comes to actually um, from the social media aspect, is it, are you leveraging heavily on the organic side? Are you also doing the paid side? No paid, zero paid, 100% organic. Do not pay for leads. I do. Yeah, I do not pay for leads. No, I would and, never. And, but how are you building these relationships that in a matter of seconds, if you survey your 100, 150 VIPs, they know exactly who Monica is. They freaking love does. her. Because I'm in real relationship with them and I'm helping them get what they want in life, not real estate related. I'm, that's it's what so I wake exhausting. up. It's so exhausting. Can you give it's us not. like a... 
Can you give us an example of what of of what that means? Yeah, there's lots of different gestures. I mean, this is really appreciation marketing is is uh, um, what we're talking about here. So, you know, whether I'm doing a random act of kindness or sending a note or um, sending a thoughtful gift or spending time with them or connecting them with somebody that can help them. Hey, they, they need a roofer and I've got that. I mean, it can be real tactical, but no longer am I just like that passive friend that like, oh, their dog died. Oh, that's so sad. Next. Like, no, the freaking dog died. Like I'm calling that your grandma died. I'm calling them. Oh my gosh, I saw your grandma died. I know how close you were to her. What, you know, what are you going to miss most about her? I know she was a great cook. What was your favorite? We're going to have this meaningful conversation because I'm going to show up as a human being first. Real she actually cares person. about them, which is like to a point, like as you're building your, your people and your tribe, you have to get rid of the people that you don't like. Oh, that's why this is authentic because you can't have in no. your list of 100 to 150, you can't have that one guy that, geez, I think he could send me like seven deals. I should probably kiss his ass. No, that is the worst idea. If you think he's a class A jerk, get him off your list because it doesn't work. Come to somebody else and then take a referral indefinitely. We've yeah. got some of those set up. Right. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in gaining access to our course and coaching 100% for free, then head over to go.eliteagentsecrets.com.